Sitting at 65,000 tonnes, the impressive HMS Prince of Wales. Construction on the second Queen Elizabeth-class aircraft carrier began in May 2011. Six shipyards have been involved in building this huge ship in sections across the country. Now the final stage of construction is well underway and it's hoped she'll take to the waves this time next year. The ship is physically complete and we're now at that stage of fitting out all the equipment inside the ship, wiring it up, plumbing it up and setting all that equipment to work. This is where the technical expertise really comes into play because the systems are brought to life, the fluid systems are energised, the electrical systems are energised. It's very important to control the work in this phase and new skills are required to operate machinery and plant at this stage too. The new generation of aircraft carriers are a massive step forward for the Royal Navy and with two of them in operation, it means an uninterrupted aircraft carrier strike capability for the British military. Where we're going to is we're leaving the weapons preparation area on two deck and we're going up into the forward island to the, the main bridge. Uh, so essentially we're going to go up uh, past the flight deck into the forward island and the, the, the main bridge, uh, which is where the, the ships uh, uh, con from while at sea. So in essence there's uh, nine decks below the flight deck and essentially there's nine decks in each of the islands as well. So in total there's 18. So, so where we are at the moment, we're in the, the, in the main bridge. So this, this is where we uh, uh, con the ship from. So here we've got all the consoles for the manoeuvring uh, and propulsion side of the, uh, the ship. And then here we've got the, the radars and the electronic chart displays on the right hand side. Where we are at the moment is we're at the top of the, the ramp on the flight deck of HMS Prince of Wales. Behind me we have the somewhat iconic uh, twin island structure. So the forward island is where we con and crew the ship from and the aft island is where we do all the flying operations from Flyco. So the, the ramp is a unique British invention where it essentially provides vertical lift to the aircraft as, as it's taking off, which means the aircraft can take off with significantly higher payloads weight, payload weights, which include ordnance and or fuel. Now this ramp's got a slight curve to it, it's got a slight camber, so it's actually higher at uh, the right hand side and the starboard side than it is on the port side. And the reason that's there is to allow when the aircraft's taking off, to essentially allow the aircraft to almost start a turn as it's taking off. So in the event there was a, an incident or emergency, the aircraft already is turning back towards the, the ship. The carriers have been designed specifically with the F-35B Lightning Strike fighter jets in mind, and the crew are very keen to get going. It's a huge step forward. Uh, I think I've used the phrase game changer, uh, both in size of platform, but also the technology and how we all operate it. So it's forcing the Royal Navy to think differently about a whole host of things, which is a good thing to do. And, and for the young sailors joining, to know that this is what their fleet will be centered around for the next 50 years, it is a hugely exciting period. The 280 meter flight deck is still very much a work in progress. But when finished, it will accommodate Merlin, Apaches, Wildcat and Chinooks, as well as the F-35B fighter jets. Not only is the flight deck of HMS Prince of Wales huge, it's intelligently designed. This ramp here is at 13 degrees. It helps the F-35B fighter jets with their takeoff, their fuel consumption and their missile range. The work continues below the deck to get this huge ship ready for a year's time. Teams are working tirelessly to get the hangar ready to accommodate the aircraft that will operate from this ship. And at 163 metres long by 129 metres wide, HMS Prince of Wales will be able to pack a serious punch when deployed. We have 20 F-35 that can uh, be accommodated in, inside the hangar. Um, if it's a Merlin, there's 26 Merlin, it can be accommodated in the, in, in the hangar. 26 Sea Harriers and, and 30 Sea Kings. Propelling this 65,000 tonne behemoth is taking some serious engineering work. This room will operate the two 120 tonne Rolls-Royce MT-30 gas turbines, 
which produce enough energy to power the city of Aberdeen. And with the ships designed to be able to operate with a crew of less than 700, everything on HMS Prince of Wales is geared around maximising manpower. We have a very sophisticated um, control system called IPMS that uh, allows us to monitor and control start and stop all the equipment remotely from this one location. So this allows a, a small team of RN watchkeepers to be able to, to monitor and control the safety of all the, the plant on the ship. It expands to every system in terms of monitoring and also stop and starts with Christmas with the propulsion down to um, waste management. Any, every single system also it taps into you know, damage control as well. That's a very vital thing and obviously we go to war. And this intelligent design is also evident in the weapons preparations area. The automised magazines save time and manpower in the transferring of weaponry throughout this huge ship when requested. So a system like this in terms of moving munitions around the ship would typically take around 300 personnel. Uh, with this level of technology uh, we're looking at around 30 people uh, to actually operate a system like this. So if you think of 50 years of service on the carrier that's a significant saving uh, from a manpower point of view. By the time she leaves Rosyth next year, HMS Prince of Wales will have been in build for more than eight years. Alongside her sister ship, HMS Queen Elizabeth, she'll be the biggest and most powerful ship ever operated by the Royal Navy and will provide a continuous aircraft carrier strike capability for the next 50 years.